Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I'll be starting my series of rebuilding every VCT Pacific team. I've already done this series for Americas, so go check that out if you haven't. Um, and today, I'll be starting with Team Secret, who is probably my favorite Pacific team out of all of them. I mean, there's a lot of teams that I liked last year because of their rosters, but I think this one was by far my favorite. Um, just because the way they played the game, I liked it. Um, but as for the housekeeping things and everything like that, that I get to at the beginning of all these videos, just to make sure everybody who may have not been here um, knows what I'm talking about. So this is a series of videos going over every team in Pacific that I have making two or more roster changes. If they're making one change, I'll go over them in a video at the end of the, um, of like all the, so I'll go through all, all the teams. I don't know how many, it's like six or something like that. I'm making two or more changes. And then, after that, I'll do a recap going through the six teams, six or so teams I've already done, and then also the teams that have made one change. Like, I'll tell you now, Paper Rex did make one, but I'm not going to reveal what it is yet. Um, also, this series is going to be what I think these teams should do, not what I think will happen. Obviously, there's a lot of off-season news going down. If you want to hear me tweeting about it on Twitter, uh, I'd recommend to go follow me. Link is in the description. You can also join my Discord People are posting stuff in there every now and then, and we'll talk about stuff. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, let's get right into the video and show you this roster. So first off, we got to go through what happened last season for this team. They brought in Warbirds as the head coach in the offseason. Um, as far as I know, they didn't make any other changes. I did check. Maybe I missed something. Um, but at Lock-In, they, they got 9th to 16th, getting a huge upset win over Team Liquid, which kind of set off their year with a lot of momentum. And then in the Pacific regular season, they got fifth, which was kind of disappointing in my eyes. I thought they were going to be a top, like, two to three team, maybe. Um, and they kind of just had a rough patch in the middle of the season. In the playoffs, they got fifth to sixth, only beating... I forget who they beat. It might have been Gen G, but I'm not exactly sure. It was Gen G or Zeta, I think. They beat in the first round and then went out almost beating DRX. Um, and then losing to Genji in the lower round. So I think it was Zeta the first time they beat. Um, and then in Pacific LCQ, they got second in tragic fashion. I was so convinced they were going to win that event, and they did not. So our goal for this roster um, isn't to make some massive, huge improvements, but it's just to be able to make these international events, which they haven't been able to do outside of lock-in. And, I mean, they haven't made one since 2020. One, I believe um, I could be wrong um, but they made champions and did okay at that event they made playoffs um, but you want to just have a team that can make it to these events and compete in groups and potentially grow into an even better team um, but I don't know exactly what the ceiling for this team will be but I do have a lot of confidence in all of these players to at least be able to do this and we'll start here with who will be staying and who will be leaving um, I'm going to cut out the like section where I have like three different slides for like all the players I'm keeping or like a, one slide for each player that I'm keeping. I'm just going to explain why I'm keeping them here and then I'll get into more why these players are leaving. Um, so we'll be keeping Jeremy, who in my eyes was the better of the two between him and Dubstep. I did really like his Killjoy. I liked his raise. I think he can learn Jet, um, which is probably the easier of the two duelists to learn. Um, that will be super meta here. Um, and I don't know. I just think you have to keep one of them. Um, if you're going to keep both of them, then you got to like figure out some way to keep them on one role each. Because personally, I didn't hate their system of swapping them back and forth. Because on Killjoy, they were pretty much the same player. Um, and on the Duelist, like... If you told me that like one of them was playing the duelist for instead of the other one, I would believe you. But also, having two players swapping between the duelist on different maps kind of screws up your timings with XX and stuff. And just having one player on a set roll the whole time will help this team a lot. So that's why I'm getting rid of dubstep here um, in favor of Jeremy. I'll go into dubstep specifically a little bit later. Um, Jesse Vash. Um... He's one of the older players in VCT. I don't know if he is the oldest. Um, it's quite possible that he is now that 
FNS is not going to be playing anymore. It might just be Angel, though. Uh, not exactly sure about that, though. Um, and yeah, I think he brags okay, has decent flexibility. Like, he's not the best IGL in the world or the best individual in the world. He's far from the best individual. But he's a very good player to have here and kind of helps build a culture here, which I do very much like. And I'm a big fan of his, his work with this team. And then Envy, um, I just have the reason here that he's my GOAT. Um, I loved watching this guy. Uh, when they took him, I think it was it was against DRX in playoffs. They played Bind, and they wanted to play Gecko. So they brought in their Gecko one-trick, Lene, I think is how you pronounce it. And they took out Envy, which was just Giga Troll. And I feel like they would have had a lot better of a chance to win that map had he played he also was forced onto some viper stuff last year that if they can just get him on ko sky breach any role like that when he's playing the flash initiator he's top two in pacific in my eyes behind stacks obviously you um oh fuck you got Devi as well he might be three but he's up there for the best players in pacific period regardless of role um and yeah he He's just so impressive to me. So now we got to get into why we're replacing each player. And Borkum, there's kind of a short list here because I don't really think he was super bad per se. Um, I think he did have a rough start in Pacific, or at least still a rough regular season. In the playoffs, I think he was fine. And in LCQ, I think he was fine. But he never really, like, stepped up and had a huge performance for this team in any game all year which obviously isn't a huge issue but this team also doesn't have like that i don't know aspas level player that demon one level player that jogamo level player like kind of that kind of stuff something even where like maybe you can be like mind freak where he generally doesn't perform too well he'll have a pop-off game or two within a tournament and maybe help you win some games down the stretch but he wasn't even doing that what mind freak was doing like i do think he was a huge part of why their haven was so good maybe that and to me that did seem like a lot of like set utility where they were like so so good at flooding into backside on c um, on defense i thought they had the best haven defense in the world consistently all year um, they were just so good at it. Um, but to me, that also that again just felt like a lot of set utility, like stuff that they talked about beforehand, not like him throwing stuff on the fly and helping out his teammates, which I don't think he was bad at, but I don't think he was great at. And I just found a way better player that will frag more than Borkum, uh, just straight up. Uh, and if he doesn't have a better year, I mean, oh no, yeah, never mind. He didn't officially. Okay. If he doesn't have a better year than Borkum, I would be shocked no matter what league he plays in. Um, but yeah, overall, I just, I wasn't ever a huge Borkum fan. Uh, he had some good tournaments back in 2021 uh, for this team, and he has a funny name. But other than that, he didn't really do much for this team at all last year. And then on the dubstep, this will be a bit shorter since we covered him a bit more earlier. Um, but as I said before, caused some roll overlap with Jeremy with just playing the duelist. Like he'll play the jet while Jeremy plays the raise on other maps. Um, and they always needed somebody to play the killjoy between the two of them. And just picking one to play that role of duelist is just a lot better. Um, and we have a better player who um, can come in and play Sentinel. Um, that doesn't mean I think Dubstep's a bad player. I think he should fit into another franchise team here. Um, but I do have some issues with the system that they had in place, and that just means Dubstep has to go. Also, I think Jeremy was just a better player than him. Uh, Dubstep was never really a elite player. Like, his opping wasn't really that great. Um, his rifling was pretty good, but other than that, he didn't really do too much anyways um and yet yeah, as i said jeremy's just the better player and knows how to play the more valuable duelist better in raise at the moment obviously jet could still be meta and i could be wrong about that but 
I'm going to assume that Raze is the more meta of the two duelists, which I think was already trending in that direction at Champions. And with the new jet changes, I think will start to trend even more in that direction. So now onto the roles that we'll need to fill. We need a Smokes player and we need a Sentinel player. Um, now that we're moving Jeremy to full-time duelist, um, we won't need or we won't have anybody to play that Killjoy role. Um, so as for some of the players that we have, obviously the um, the depth that I can go into with these players is not as much as some of the NA talent or even some of the Brazilian talent for that matter. Um, because I'm just not super familiar with APAC players. Like I'll, I'll know some of the guys that went to champions in some of the events. Um, but other than that, not super familiar. Same thing with the MEA that I'll get to after the Pacific, but, um, like I watched Ascension. I watched every team. I watched some of like a little bit of the challengers leagues. I don't know which ones I watched. I don't really remember. I just wrote some names down. Um, and some thoughts about them. So for Sentinel players, you have Blaze King, Nizzy, and Winner, who were all very good. Um, one of them stood out above the rest that I will be signing here. Um, and then for controller players, it was really just High Z, Yes I Can, who was an IGL, um, I'm pretty sure, but was also pretty mechanically skilled from the games I watched. Um, and maybe we could bring in an import here. Not exactly sure, um, but we'll get to that when we assign our controller. So we'll start here with the import player that I mentioned earlier in Xander, who, I mean, both of these upgrades that I'm bringing in, I am so excited for. Um, obviously, I'm not going to get to see it play out, but it's just a really good roster. Um, in my opinion, he was the best Smokes player in Tier 2 NA. It was him, Valen, and Scuba at times who like flip-flopped throughout the year, but I think Xander ended up finishing as the best in my oh geez in my opinion um there's not really a ton of controller players as i mentioned before in tier two for at least apac um and i couldn't really fit him in an america's team because there were just so many smokes player igls i liked bang better than him i like i mean i obviously like jogamo better than him in eg um and yeah i just think this guy is so good um he's one of the best fragging smokes players in the world period like if you want a comparison for him it would probably be demon one when he plays smokes when he plays smokes maybe a little bit less like aggressive um but like the same like i mean even like down to the aiming style um and like just how they like walk through the map i think they are very similar in that sense um, and I'm really excited to be bringing in Xander here for Team Secret. And then our second player here is Blaze King, who just got signed to Global Esports, which I think is an amazing move. But in this world, that's not where he went. Um, he's coming here to Team Secret, and in my opinion, was the best Sentinel player in all of Tier 2, just period, even counting in Americas, where you had like Net, you had Besney. I think Blaze King is better than both of those players. He was so good. Um, you could argue he probably should have been in Tier 1 last year after having a really good performance on Boom. Maybe contract stuff didn't allow that. Not exactly sure how that worked. But he was incredible in Sentinel last year. And he can also play Initiator in Smokes. Um, I would prefer to keep him on that Sentinel role, which I'm going to be doing here. Um, there's also rumors that he might be playing Duelist for uh for global which i wouldn't love because he does seem like more of a like slow paced player that is really good at like holding angles and stuff which i think if you move him to smokes i think that's fine but you're not moving xander off smokes on this team um and yeah i just think this guy is an unbelievable player and should fit really well into this team so here's our final roster. We have Jeremy as our duelist player, playing with Jet, the Rays, maybe some Neon or some other weird stuff here and there. Envy as our Flex, who's been going to be playing the KO, the Sky, the Breach, just all the Flash initiators. Uh, maybe some Fade here or there, or maybe some Viper, depending on the map. Jesse Vash as our initiator and IGL. Uh, Blaze King as our Sentinel player, and Xander as our controller. Now, one thing I would like to mention, this team is rumored to have cut warbirds but the 
team and Warbirds have like been memeing about it on Twitter, so I don't think it's real. But also, if they do that, that's completely troll. I think Warbirds is like the best coach in Pacific outside of Alex. Um, I don't know if that's a hot take, um, but I don't really think there's a lot of good coaches in Pacific for that matter. But um, and I think he's up there for coaches in the entire world. Some of the like stuff that they did. I mean, I talked about it earlier with their Haven. It was just incredible, and some of the anti strats they pulled out for certain teams, like DRX's Haven, um, specifically was one that I remembered in their regular season game. They were the only team to beat DRX in the regular season. Um, if they cut Warbirds, this team is going to fall apart. Um, and I would just, if that happens, I'm going to be very upset. All right, so ignore the cut there. I got to do the outro now. I completely forgot. So, um, yeah, that's going to be it for the video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff helps, really helps me out. If you want more reactions to like Valorant news and stuff, um, go follow me on Twitter. I retweet everything. I comment on most things, um, give my opinion. So if you're curious about that, go follow me on there. If you want a little bit more of in-depth opinions than what I give on Twitter, sometimes I'll explain some stuff um, in deeper meaning, but you can go join my Discord, which is in the description. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.